um, and, and, and PHP. Um, all right. So obviously, I mean, the first thing you need to do is just uh, go to the um, installation instructions provided by um, the Open Journal Systems um, website there. Right, and you notice that um, I've already downloaded uh, OJS 3.1.2 uh, there. Um, and just to showcase that at this point, I'd already installed um, Apache, right? So you can, you can see there that Apache is already installed. Um, and then also just trying to showcase the fact that MySQL um, was already installed on this platform. So I, I, by the time I started making the screencast, I'd already installed MySQL. Um, just trying to showcase the version of MySQL that I, I ended up installing or that's running on this particular platform. There we go. Um, and also just to mention this is an Ubuntu 19.0.4, uh, uh, I believe. <clears throat> um, just also to showcase the version of Python that, I mean, sorry, PHP that I'm working with, PHP version uh, 7.2.19 there. And, and obviously you notice that um, all those specifications kind of conform to the minimum requirements uh, for OGS to, OGS to be successfully installed. Um, and then just to showcase the, um, the version of Ubuntu that I'm running or the operating system that I'm running, 64-bit obviously. Um, <coughs> there we go, oh sorry, not 19, but it's 18.0.4, right? Long-term release, uh, Bionic, uh, for those that care. Okay, um, so just uh, showcasing the broad range of uh, steps to follow so far as instructions are concerned there, um, specifically after you've already installed the components there. It's a trivia process really, um, and you see exactly what makes it trivial. So there we go, the, there's a, um, the tar file, the gzip tar file that I have, I'm just extracting it using tar. Um, it's not a very uh, lengthy process there, so once, once I I, I deflate um, the zip file. <clears throat> I notice that I'm just following through the instructions specified on the OJS website itself. Um, and it specifies that you're supposed to, to move the extracted archive to the, um, to the web server, right? So to the location of the web server or the folder that is used to serve the, the, the essentially the web pages. And because I'm working with Apache, I'm essentially going to copy across the folder that I just deflated to the um, appropriate directory. Um, okay, so there is the location of where web pages are um, actually saved from. And so I'm just going to uh, copy across the file that I extracted or deflated. Um, um, from the location it's at, which is projects or js uh, under about packages to right here, right? So it's my home directory right there. Um, simple process, I'm just using rsync to kind of simulate what's going on. I want to see exactly what files are being copied, but you could just as well use uh, copy command cp or the move command if you so wish. Um, but you must remember to actually ensure that you sudo the, the process, you use sudo because uh, of the permissions for this particular location. So there we go. Um, and what I'm doing there is I'm just renaming the, the folder that I just copied across to an easy to remember name or an appropriate name. In this case, uh, I've decided I'm just gonna name it uh, uh, DRGS uh, hyphen journals. Um, and again, I'm getting that error because I need to uh, use sudo there. So there we go, done. <clears throat> um, and then just to confirm that I have um, the files um, in there, I'm just doing a simple check there. Um, and then you notice from the instructions that uh, um, number two there is saying you need to make sure that uh, you change ownership and permissions um, to, 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 to the appropriate, you, you need to make sure that you change uh, permissions for the directory itself and the ownership to appropriate um, entities. Um, you, you typically get away with just uh, granting ownership to www-data um, um, uh, uh, to that particular directory, the entire directory. And um, what that does is it gives access to the Apache user WW uh, hyphen data to the location itself. And I've noticed from past experience that I, I tend not to experience any problems when I do that. 
Um, but just for, for good measure, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm, I just transitioned to a different sort of server. I'm just trying to see what sort of permissions. There's another instance of OJS installed on a different server. I'm just checking the permissions I had there. And you notice that the owner, in that case, was the BW uh, hyphen data. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but not only that, um, I'm also supposed to have um, uh, an additional directory, which is going to be used to house the um, the um, the files, the files that are going to be uploaded um, onto the OJS instance itself. Um, all right, so what I'm doing there is I'm just saying I'm, I'm going to grant uh, ownership recursively to www-data. Um, um, and the, the reason I, I couldn't auto-complete there, obviously, is I need to use sudo for me to do that. So I'm going to give uh, access to the entire directory or those two directories, drgs-journals uh, and drgs-journals-files, www-data. Uh, um, and you notice the group again by default, I'm just giving it to uh, www-data. Uh, remember that the, the, the change owner um, command must be or must use the R flag, right? So that the, the, the ownership is changed recursively. So everything inside of that folder is going to have the same um, owner, essentially. Okay. Um, just following through, can't quite remember what I was doing here, but I was just probably just reading the, the instructions there, wondering why it took a lot of time to do that, but that's besides the point. All right, so you notice that I was creating those files as part of step number three there. I, I was creating the directory that's going to hold the files as part of step number three there. I was just switching across there because, there's, like I said, there's another server that already has OJS installed. And so essentially what I was doing is trying to see if I was doing the right things. Um, and just to confirm that uh, the directors I just created um, have the appropriate files, I'm just using the uh, start command there to, to see the specific access um, allocated to this particular um, directory on the server with OJS installed. And I'm doing the same thing on the server where I um, I'm currently installing OJS, so I'm checking the permissions associated with that folder. And you notice that true, true to that, they're more or less the same. So 0, uh, 0755 there, that's a octal representation of the permissions, um, which is fine. And I do the same for for the uh, directory that's, um, that has installation files um, itself, and you notice the permissions are also the same. Right? Okay, um, and as part of three, I'm sure people have re realized that I haven't really moved that location to an, an unwritable location, which is just fine, really, doesn't matter. Okay, so Okay, the rest of the instructions are more to do with the upgrade process. So there's just uh, five steps really that you have to follow through for you to install JS, which is pretty trivial. Um, and so once you do that, the, the next step is essentially to install the, the platform itself. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just confirming that the IP address I'm working with is correct. This machine is uh, currently, it's not open to the public, and so which is why I'm using an IP address and I'm on the same network where the, um, the server is currently located. So I'm just copying across that um, IP address to see if I can go through with the installation process. Um, and essentially what I'm doing there, you notice, is I'm just pointing it to to the uh, to the uh, the name of the directory where the OJS installation files are actually uh, located. 
for those GRGs and other uh, journals. There's a bit of an issue there. Um, for some reason, I can't open, I couldn't open the, uh, uh, or I couldn't proceed with the installation, um, the installation process, ideally. Um, and, and really, when you run into such problems, what you typically have to do is, uh, you guessed it right, you check the logs, right? Uh, you must check the logs. There's usually very descriptive information in the logs. Uh, so it could be a system logs or it could be Apache logs. And I'm just confirming there that the web server Apache is actually running. But just for good measure, I'm restarting Apache because um, I was suspecting that it, uh, one of the reasons why I couldn't proceed with installation instruction was probably because um, I didn't restart Apache once I, I copied the files across. Although really it doesn't make any logical sense, but just confirming you never know what might uh, be root cause of that so just confirming that after the restart apache is running and it is running there you go um and so which brings me to the previous uh issue i raised the logs right you want to make sure you check the logs. so you notice that already when i, I check the status of apache i see that uh, if you're looking um that if you're looking uh error code or warning message there um and even though it probably has nothing to do with the instruction, uh, the, the problem I've just ran into, but I'm just uh, looking it up to, to just check what could be the root cause of that. Again, I attempt to try it, see if it works, and <clears throat> it doesn't work. So what do I do now? Um, I essentially attempt to, this is the part where I start looking at the logs themselves, the log files. Right? So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can go into, um, into the system logs, check the system logs. Um, and I'm telling it so that I can I can see the changes uh, to the logs in real time. So again, I I do what I did before. I I try to access the page to see no errors there. So meaning that I I can't see the the potential errors associated with uh, what I'm experiencing right now in the sys logs. So what I do is uh, I go to more application specific logs. In this case, the Apache two logs, right? So um, I go into var logs, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Apache 2, and then within there, um, I need to suit obviously within there, I, um, I'm switching as I'm switching into root. Within there, I will find uh, all sorts of logs. So there's error logs and then there's access logs as well. So my interest is in the error logs. And you notice here, corresponding time ta timestamps have a whole range of errors, so PHP errors there. Um, and so usually these 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 errors will, will tend to to highlight the potential root cause of the problem that you might be experiencing at that point in time. So again, I'm I'm using tell here to see the the errors in real time because I want to see what's actually happening when I attempt to do what I was doing, going through the installation process. So I, I do the same thing, and if I go back to the locks, you see, boom, the error comes up there. And I see that uh, the error has something to do with uh, XML under bar parser under bar create. Yeah, the best voted answer seems to suggest that. Uh, the PHP hyphen XML um, package needs to be installed. Uh, so, which is what I'm doing right now. <clears throat> um, so the, the funny thing about uh, the server I was working on is that uh, the connection to the internet was a bit iffy, and so there are certain parts of, of the screencast that I'm just going to fast forward, um, just so I, I, I don't waste time, or I don't lengthen the uh, amount of time that's, that, that, that the screencast is, is going to be aired for. OK, so again, I, I do a tell um, to the error log to try and see if my attempt to install um, OJS will again result in any error. I tell it, um, and then I, <coughs> after installing the, the, the package, of course, I restart Apache just in case. Um, so 
I, I, I of course, I've still, uh, it's still told, the error, error .log is still, the Apache error.log is still told. And then what I'm going to do is attempt to go through the installation process. So go back to the browser there, um, and then point the browser at the URL specific to the OJS um, installation files. There you go. Okay, so IP address and then the name of the installation folder. Okay, um, it appears I still have I have another error there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, making some progress, but there's another error that is more to do with the, the function MB under bus split. I don't know if you can see that. So the timestamp 11:47 with 50th second, 90 about well, 50th second. They notice that there's a PHP fatal error. Um, which is in part probably why I can't proceed with the installation process there. Um, <coughs> so, um, what I'm doing here is uh, using apt-get to install the specified package, which is PHP MB string. There we go. Um, and then I will install it. Again, like I said, this uh, the um, connection to the internet on this particular server is really slow. Um, And as I'm waiting for that installation process to finish, I'm just looking up um, um, other forum, forum posts out there. <clears throat> okay, finally done there. So once that is done, I go through the same process where I attempt to go through the installation process again, um, and at the same time simultaneously checking to see if there'll be potentially any other errors in the logs. And again, for good measure, I restart Apache. Um, um, and then so I go to the error logs again, I've, I've still told it, and then I, I will attempt to go through the installation process. Okay, so done. At least we're getting somewhere. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, no issues there with no no error logs, and you notice that uh, at least we've gotten to we've gotten further ahead of ourselves now. Um, so I get this installation page, which has specifics on um, on on what is configuration details that you need to supply. So things like the username of the administrator account, for instance. Um, email address and password, um, the type of database that you're wanting to use or you are wanting to integrate with OJS. Is it MySQL? Is it Postgres? Or is it MariaDB, for instance? Um, most of this stuff is pretty much self-explanatory and this installation page itself has those details. Um, and the, in my case, I mean, primary language is obviously going to be English. Um, I'll leave the defaults for the character sets that I need to specify there because we're mostly dealing with English anyways. Um, and then that's the important part here. The, the location of where the files are going to be must match with the location that you specified um, in here. Like in my case, the location of my files are going to be in that location. So I copy it across um, and replace the default option there. Okay, 
Um, so things like the host is local host, that's just fine. Um, Um, so these are database database details that I need to provide. So in my case, I just decided I was going to attempt to install this uh, OJS instance using the um, MySQL root uh, root username um, and just changing that OI uh, the repository identifier to something more descriptive, essentially. You probably want to look up the Open Archives Initiative protocol metadata harvesting or IPMH if you want to find out specific details about what this repository identifier is used for. Essentially, it's very useful um, when you have downstream services that kind of like harvest content from um, um, your OGS, OGS installations uh, or instances. <coughs> okay, um, then so things like database names, MySQL. Fine. Right, so seeing as this is just like a sandbox, it's fine. I'll just use the, the names and the passwords will be changed on there production server. Okay, and I've decided I was going to appropriately name the uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the database to something more descriptive. So in my case, this name is specific to the entities we're installing the instance for. Uh, so that's uh, DRGS. Okay, so I'm going to install Open Journal Systems platform now, see if it works. Okay, it seems to be a problem there. Not sure why, but again, the error logs. There we go, another PHP federal error right there. I don't know if people can see that. It's to do with the connection to my SQL. Right, so my SQL underbar connector, the last timestamp, 11.55 in the 41st second. <clears throat> so like before, what, what you do is, or what I do is, I'm just going to quickly look up the error message online to see what could possibly have caused the error, um, and then hopefully find a solution. And so, Obviously, the initial assumption I had was maybe it has something to do with the password here. So I attempt to connect and I notice I'm having issues connecting locally whilst I'm logged on to the, to the server itself. Um, so this, this actually gets to tell me that the error I'm experiencing might potentially uh, be as a result of um, the connection to the database itself. Okay, so I again attempt to go through the installation process. Notice I again have to specify those configuration details, a la the username, the password, um, the email, the location of the directory on the server, which is going to be used to 
um, to hold the files, the, the journal files that would have been uploaded. Um, I have to change that also, the location. Um, details of the database, and this is the part where I change uh, to the database driver that I was supposed to change to, so my SQLi, my SQLi. Um, Okay, and then I install JS, and then uh, you notice that, uh, boom! So something seems to be happening. No more error messages, just warning messages. Um, and, and really you notice uh, that the progress bar on the bottom right corner there just kind of signals the fact that there's something happening behind the scenes, which is usually a good Okay, so finally done. Notice that the installation process is done. So indeed the problem was with the database driver that I was using initially. The default tends to be tends out to be the wrong one to use. And then, you know, the process I'm going through right now is a normal process where I just log in to see if um, I can start configuring the installation of OJS. Uh, that wasn't so painful now, was it? No. Okay, so um, I'm now attempting to see if I can create, because in my case, um, the goal is actually to create um, details for three journals, and all these journals are going to be serviced by this one instance of OJS, just because it will make life a lot easier by way of uh, managing, managing the instance itself. Um, <clears throat> and at the same time, I'm pretty obsessed when it comes to look and feel aesthetics of things and so I, I tend not to like the default themes for most of these content management systems um, and so in the next couple of minutes what I'm going to do is just go through the process of installing some of uh, more recent OJS themes that I think look pretty. Pretty is always nice. Everybody likes pretty things, at least I do anyway. Okay, I, li I love um, I love Bootstrap and, and I love the way the Bootstrap 3 OJS theme actually kind of looks like. Um, I just like the simplicity associated with it. And, um, so I, uh, I'm going to attempt to install Bootstrap 3 here. Okay, just to kind of showcase exactly, I was just trying to see here and showcase how it looks like and I was also uh, wanting to see how it looks like just because last time I played around with OJS was uh, sometime last year, I think end of last year and so um, bound to have been changes to the to the theme itself, people are constantly making changes uh, to themes and so I'm just trying to confirm if uh, if uh, any changes made. Um, looks like that URL out there is a dead link, so just have to go to the GitHub page, the home page for the project itself. Should be able to find uh, more reliable links there. Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna go with the uh, <coughs> excuse me with the latest. Um, the latest version of this theme here. So copy the link um, to the to the package there, and then just um, download it from within the server, I guess. And you notice that the installation process or four-step process is pretty trivial. 
Um, uh, just confirming that the package that I wish to install for bo the Bootstrap theme is compatible with the version of OGS that I just installed. And it turns out it is there. You can see that. Minimum requirements, right? Okay. Three dot one dot two. Yeah, so very basic is installation instructions. All you have to do is just download the theme, uh, deflate it or uncompress it, <coughs> then copy across the resulting directory um, after you uncompress the package to that location right there. So plugins um, and then the themes directory. Again, I apologize for the noise outside the kids. Okay, so I'll attempt to download it from within here. And again, like I said, the internet connectivity for this particular server is, is a bit iffy here, um, which is why um, there's a bit of an issue there. Okay, so what I am instead going to attempt to do here is because I'm the same network as the server, uh, what I just did was I downloaded the server, I mean the package locally and then just uh, uh, moved it to the server um, remotely from within the network. It turned out to be much faster that way. Okay, uh, just taking note of the IP address so that I can I can ask the file to the location there. Okay. Boom, done, All right? There we go, so file transferred. <clears throat> and then once I transfer the uh, bootstrap theme, I go through the, uh, the theme installation instructions, five step process, very basic process where um, you have to compress it. It's a tar file obviously, so, and it's gzip, so you, you tie it, um, extract the, uh, the file, and you notice that the deflated Directory there is a bootstrap bootstrap directory which I will then move to the plugins uh, theme uh, the themes uh, the plugin slash themes location within the OGS installation directory. <clears throat> Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna to go to plugins and then themes. Boom. Okay, so I'm supposed to dump that deflated uh, directory in here. So again, obvious because of permission issues, um, I'll just move what I've extracted there to to this location. Instead of copying it, I'll just move it anyway. Save us a bit of space. I've changed my mind here. Clearly, I'm, I'm copying it across using rsync. Again, I'm using rsync just so I can see what sort of files are being copied across. Um, just satisfy myself, I guess. Okay, so I've copied it across. And again, more important thing here is I need to change the permissions. Make sure that uh, permissions, uh, appropriate permissions and uh, donorship details are specified. And I found it quite use, easy to, or it's a lot easier for me to copy across the permissions. So this is what I'm doing there. I'm using the change mode, um, the change mode command, um, 
recursively so that I copy the permissions set it with the default PIM directory there um, and then copy the permissions across the bootstrap 3 directory recursively so everything is going to, to be in terms of permissions at least it's going to be an exact mirror of what I have there and then what I do is again explicitly change the owner of that particular uh, folder that I just copied across and I change it www hyphen data uh, this is an Apache user um, and then once I do that, I go to my uh, to the OJS web interface to see if I I can actually um, gain access to to the um, <clears throat> excuse me if I can gain access to or if I can configure the, the I can set the installed theme as default or something and then get to apply it um, to the general installation. Okay, and what I was attempting to do here, actually I hadn't used a JS in a really long time, I was attempting to kind of create a journal there in your journal, or try and see if I could apply the theme, so I just said to create the journals up front, is what I'm doing there, so I'm going to create the journal, um, and provide the journal details that I need. Okay, just copying across the journal details there. Nothing to do with installation process here. I just wanted to make sure I had the correct details. Not that it matters because you can easily modify those things anyway. Okay, so there's there's three journals that I'm going to associate to the instance itself. So we'll create three separate journals. In this case, um, jobs, JLSS, um, and journals. Okay, <clears throat> so I'll provide the details of the journal that I created. Um, and then specify exactly how users are going to be accessing the journal itself. Like the abbreviations for the journal, essentially in this case, it's like journals for that particular journal. Okay, still need to look into the connectivity issue. It seems to be a bit of an issue with regards to connecting to the server, at least. Just confirming to see if there was any error um, or any errors would pop up in the error logs there, just to confirm. Okay, there we go. So I just created the uh, the first journal, and I just need to provide a bit of editing information because it's, uh, it says it's untitled there. Um, so I just resupply the information that I supplied, then, um, and then hope that uh, just save those details and hope that they will come up. Boom. Okay. So that is done. Um, then what I do now is uh, essentially go through the process of trying to see if uh, I can create the other two journals and then after I'm done creating the other two journals I'll go through the process of applying the theme that I just installed just to see how it works right instead of applying default theme so I'm coming across this other journal which is Jab's Journal of Agriculture and Biomedical Sciences
And that's just a path, the short the abbreviation for the genre is it good enough path. Okay, no errors there, just a warning message, which should be fine. Um, the th thing to note about what I'm doing right now is that uh, I guess I was getting a bit impatient, but you notice the progress, um, the, 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 the progress of the process appears right at the bottom right corner there. I don't know if you saw that. Again, I'm just uh, trying to check which uh, if the other journal has been created and it seems to be untitled, so I just need to resupply those details. You don't have to do that. The reason that happened with me is I got a bit impatient and so I kind of stopped this, <coughs> um, this process before it actually finished. Okay, um, and then I go through with the, um, um, just to kind of check the settings here. Okay, this is good enough. I, you, you notice that the settings I'm checking out are the settings that are specific to the genre itself. And then I, <clears throat> what I'm doing now is just to test out to see if the theme works before I create the other genre, I guess. Um, I try to attempt to see if I can apply the theme to one of those two um, hosted journals. Okay, um, so I'm just going to go to plugins and then activate that particular theme itself. Yeah, the instructions say that, I think. Um, so scroll down there under plugins and then just tick. Um, under theme plugins, just tick the Bootstrap 3 theme. Best theme. Um, and then the instructions further say that for you to apply it, you need to go to the appearance, um, to the appearance tab, um, so that you get to specify that you want to use Bootstrap as the base theme and not the default one that is used. Okay, so I'm going to go to settings website and then um, scroll somewhere down and up here and scroll somewhere down there where it says, uh, no, somewhere theme there under theme instead of best theme, I'll apply B Bootstrap 3 best theme. Um, and then I'll just save these changes. Okay, so once I save the changes, um, what I do is uh, I'll basically attempt to see if I can if I can see um, how the, the journal would otherwise look like once that theme is applied. Um, and then essentially just try and compare it with other existing or pre-existing themes. Okay, so I'm just gonna open the link to the journal itself using a separate window, an incognito window, just to see how it looks like. Um, I'm just the same window anyway. And then, boom, there we go. So the bootstrap theme has been applied. This is how it looks like. Um, you notice if I if I switch, if I alternate to the other journal that is still using the default theme, for instance, um, <coughs> excuse me, that still uses the default theme, for instance, I get to see, um, I get to see something completely different. So I'm just changing to jobs now, and this is the default theme here, right? And really, the, the differences in the, in the themes are not apparent at this point in time because there isn't really any content that has been added to the journals, but you get to see the variation in how the themes look like once you actually add content to the journals. Um, I still think the uh, Bootstrap theme looks way better than the others. The simplicity associated with it is what I like the most. Okay, and then the next step is going to be the Journal of Law and Social Sciences. Same process where I get to um, specify, um, I create the hosted journal because I only have two now. I'm supposed to create three hosted journals. Um, so I will have to go back to the um, to the root or the, dash, the dashboard, the landing page for this OJS installation and then add or create an additional journal. So I'm just going to create a journal and then you're just copying across or pasting the uh, details of the journal itself. The path is just the short name for the journal in our case here. And then I'll just um, create it, save it.
taking quite a bit of time there. <laughs> Again, I apologize for the snorting. Uh, I feel like I'm going to be sick or something. I think I'm coming down with a flu or a cold, not the flu. Probably the dust, actually. All right, so I was done there. Oh, not yet. I think it's done. I see something in the background there by way of it being done. Okay, done there, there we go. And I'm just gonna close it. So we're done, we just created all the three journals there. <clears throat> okay, and so again, just to kind of see how this looks like, uh, how it would look like, or how the public would, would view what we've just done here. Um, just going to kind of attempt to open uh, an incognito window hopefully or just a, a separate window there and this is how it looks like boom okay so we have all the three journals right there stored a very trivial process really um, all you have to do is just follow through with the instructions um, okay so i hope this this kind of uh, is going to be helpful to someone out there um, really one of the reasons I'm doing this is I'm, I might just find myself in a situation where I have to set this up again um, and so I decided to document it for myself anyway uh, okay um, thanks a lot for watching and uh, good luck if, if you're watching this because you're wanting to install OJS um, Thank you very much and cheers. Uh, listen, I'm still checking to see if there were any errors here and just clicking around here. Um, I'll just let it run until, uh, until the point when I actually stopped recording the screencast. Uh, so I'm just poking around to see if the installation works as expected and to see if there are any errors that are being generated uh, behind the scenes. And by the way, you can also check out uh, other additional themes that might be that you might fancy out there, there are a ton of them. Um, there's actually documentation on how you can create your own themes. Uh, in fact, last year, this is what we did. We created our own custom tailored theme for one of the journals that we, we run in our department, um, just to make sure that it was consistent with the branding colors and you know things to do with typography and things of that nature. Um, so a lot of documentation out there with regards to theming and other themes that you can, you can find out there. And in fact, for most of the themes, um, the licensing allows you, so flexible, it allows you to actually modify them to suit your needs. Um, at the very least, I think the requirement would be that you credit the creators of the theme, which is really not so much of an issue. You can do that by just linking to the theme homepage, essentially.
I guess I said goodbye too far too.